Well, I was used to doing a lot of outdoor activities, skiing, hiking, biking, and never ever stopped. I just can't do those things anymore. My whole outlook on life is very different and uh, it's been a big shock to me. To Joan, who has always been physically active, a diagnosis of osteoarthritis has been particularly unsettling. She has had to learn how to modify her exercise so that her condition doesn't become worse. However, by exercising at a less strenuous level and moving her joints, Joan is effectively decreasing joint stress, stiffness, and pain. So Joan, tell me how you're doing with your walking. Well, I'm using my hiking poles as much as I can. Great. And when I start out walking, I have a lot of pain. Okay. And I just stick with it, and um, it does ease as I go along. The benefits of exercise are numerous. Strengthening muscles helps to support the joint, reducing the stress on the joint itself. Moving the joint and stretching keeps the muscles and ligaments flexible, reducing stiffness and pain. Exercise also helps nourish the joint cartilage. Movement pumps fluid around the joint and over the cartilage so that it absorbs nutrients from and expels its waste products into the surrounding fluid. Another important role exercise plays is in weight control. Carrying extra weight puts additional pressure on weight-bearing joints such as your hips and knees. For every extra pound of weight carried, three to six pounds of pressure is placed on your joints. So, for example, if you lose 10 pounds, you reduce the strain on your hips and knees by 30 to 60 pounds. I wasn't as active as I had been. I was probably feeling sorry for myself and making myself feel better with more food than I needed. And so I made the decision to take that weight off. And I did lose 25 pounds and I did notice a difference. Your exercise routine should include a variety of activities, including range of motion, stretching, strength, endurance, and balance exercises. Just Raising your knee up to the front. Mm -hmm. Physiotherapists are experts in human movement, so can recommend specific exercises. If you're new to exercise, speak to your family doctor to make sure that you can exercise safely. Arthritis usually limits joint mobility. By taking weight off the joint and putting it through its full range of motion, that is, moving the joint in all directions, you can maintain and restore joint movement and relieve stiffness. Aim to put affected joints through their full range of motion five to ten times, at least once a day. I go to exercise classes five days a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays. It's called Stretch and Strengthen. That will work on the joints, makes it limber. It's like an old car. When you get, put oil in it, it works better. <laughs> Stretching maintains and restores the normal length of muscles and tendons around a joint. Tight, short muscles increase joint pain. When stretching, focus on the muscles that surround the affected joint, such as the buttocks, quadriceps, hamstring, and calf muscles. Stretch a tight or painful joint daily. It may help to stretch after the muscle is warmed up, after a shower, a short walk, or applying moist heat. However, do not apply heat to a swollen red joint. To stretch correctly, take the muscle slowly and gently to the end of its range and then hold it there for 20 to 30 seconds. Repeat twice. Strengthening exercises increase the muscle's ability to support and stabilize a joint and can also increase metabolism, which helps with long-term weight loss. Again, focus on the muscles around the affected joint, but strengthen the muscles on both sides of your body. It's been found, for example, that people with knee osteoarthritis have weak quadriceps in both the affected and unaffected leg. 
If you're having joint surgery in the near future, include arm strengthening as part of your routine. Stronger arms make it easier to move around and perform daily activities after surgery. Use a weight that you can lift at least 10, but no more than 15 times. The weight should be light enough to do the repetitions without pain or breaking proper form. Always lift slowly and smoothly, and exhale during the hardest part of the movement. At the end of the repetitions, your muscles should feel tired. Once you can easily do two sets of 15 repetitions for a muscle group, increase the resistance to continue building muscle strength. Try using ankle weights, TheraBand, tubing, or resistance from water. When adding weight no longer challenges your muscle, you may need to try a different exercise. Do strengthening exercises two to three days per week, with a day off between. Consulting with a physiotherapist or a personal trainer who is knowledgeable about osteoarthritis can help you shape your program. You could do 10 or 15 of those each day. Yes. Um, and I would do both of your legs as yes. well. You might as well keep them both strong. Okay. If your joint is hot, swollen and painful, eliminate stretching and strength exercises. Balance gentle range of motion exercises with resting the joint and using ice. Endurance exercises are continuous activities that increase heart rate and breathing, which leads to more energy and stamina. Over time, they can also reduce pain, morning stiffness, and improve walking speed and balance. They are likely the best overall type of exercise for long-term health. Aim to do 30 minutes of moderate intensity endurance exercise most days of the week. If you're just starting exercise, do 10 minutes of activity three times throughout the day to meet your 30-minute goal. For example, you can walk for 10 minutes, do housework for another 10, and later rake leaves for the final 10. You should feel your heart rate and breathing increasing during these activities. Another way to gauge your activity level is by the walk and talk test, that is, Work hard enough that you can still talk, but not be able to sing or whistle. If you can, you need to increase the intensity. Pace yourself during endurance exercise. Start slowly and gradually increase the amount that you do based on your symptoms. During exercise, minimize joint stress. Try cycling or using an exercise bike. Side to side, over one side. You want to be able to exercise all of your joints, but in a, in a kind and gentle way. And that's what programs like Arthrocise do. Uh, not just the joints that are affected, but all of your joints need to be kept in good condition. Exercising in water up to your waist reduces the stress on your lower body by 50%, while full immersion reduces the stress through your joints by up to 90%. Swimming. You know, it's an excellent way for not only getting cardio, but uh, resistance training. As a runner, you know, I can put on an aqua jogging belt and I get into a pool and I can run to my heart's content. So I've adapted, I'm not on cement pounding the pavement, but now I realize that that was probably the worst thing I could have done to my hips. If pain keeps you from exercising your lower body, you can still exercise aerobically by lifting light weights with your upper body or by using an arm ergometer. Walking is a great endurance exercise. To protect your joints, use supportive, cushioned footwear and consider using an aid such as a walker, cane or Nordic walking poles. Out there one is very sturdy. It gives you uh, good uh, security, but I find that I, I'm able to walk a lot faster. That walker is a wonderful thing. Now is, uh, is I use a walking stick. The handle is like a, a cane, and I use that to support, alleviate some of the, uh, the pounding on the bad hip. A cane takes up to 40% of the stress off your joint when used properly. Carry the cane with the hand opposite to the affected joint, and make sure it's adjusted to the height of your wrist when your arm is relaxed at your side. Besides taking weight off your joint, 
Nordic walking poles improve your balance. And because you tend to walk faster with them, you burn more calories. Avoid activities that increase the stress on damaged joints, such as using a Stairmaster, jogging, jumping, or doing deep squats. So now, what do I do to, to remain active? I uh, do indoor rowing, and this is the only activity that I can do now to work out my aerobics, my cardio and all that, that won't affect my joints because there's no pounding on the joints. When you have a damaged joint, it can be difficult to know how much exercise is too much. It's common to have mild discomfort after exercising, which you can relieve by applying ice or heat. If muscle or joint pain continues two or more hours after exercising, or fatigue lasts into the next day, you probably did too much too fast. If this is the case, rest, gently stretch your muscles, eat nutritious food, and drink plenty of water. Back off on the amount of exercise and progress more slowly. Changes to the joint, muscle weakness, loss of flexibility and pain can lead to poor balance which increases your risk of falling. So, include balance exercises in your routine. Hold on to a counter and try balancing on one foot. Begin with 10 seconds, working up to 30 seconds. Look at what you're doing now and where you can improve. Take a moment to write down all of the activities that you do in a typical week. Are you doing a variety of exercises? What activities are missing from your exercise routine? Once you identify the gaps, set specific goals for yourself. For example, if you need to add strengthening exercises, you could set a goal such as, this week I will do 10 repetitions of quadricep strengthening exercises on Monday and Thursday. Make sure that your goals are realistic for you. One of the biggest barriers to exercise can be motivation. To make exercising easier, choose activities that you enjoy. Add variety. Golf is a sport that I have a natural ability to play, so it's been a game that I, I have a great love and passion for. Try exercising with a partner or in a group. Chart your progress so that you can see how far you've come. Birding. Uh, I, I find that very, very interesting. I'm going to adapt things that, according to my age, right? So, um, there's no way I can perform the way I used to when I was 30 years old in the peak of, of my fitness. Make sure your exercise program is manageable. If you aim to do too much, you may overwhelm yourself and stop exercising altogether. It's better to underdo than to overdo it. Overexertion triggers stiffness and soreness and makes it difficult to continue. It's common to feel fatigued when starting an exercise program. But after a few weeks of regular exercise, most people report an increase in energy, improved mood, and sleep. So, do a variety of exercises each week. Find out what motivates you and set realistic exercise goals. Respect your limitations. Small changes really do matter. You'll soon see that regular increased activity makes you feel better.